Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're gonna be learning probably the most famous piano piece to come out of the ragtime era, the entertainer. So ragtime music is a really cool sounding style and the trademark sound of it is its syncopated rhythms. Now syncopation can be kind of a scary topic for the beginner, but if we were to kind of put it into a nutshell, so to speak, it simply means that you are highlighting or accenting the weak beats. So I'll put up an eighth note rhythm right here. Very, very simple stuff. One and two and three and four and. So think of the downbeat, the one, two, three, four, as the strong beat and the ends as the weak beat. So this song is going to accent those ends and you can hear it right off the bat in the first measure of theme number one. Ba -ba, da -da, da -da. So you can hear that second note, ba -ba. it gets played with a strong accent. Right? So that's kind of the trademark and the hallmark of ragtime. So this arrangement is actually based off of my friend Matt Dahlberg's arrangement. So I'll put a link in the description box below so you can check his out. Now the difference between mine and his is that I threw in a little bit more harmony, which is going to up the difficulty level. So if at any time throughout this lesson, something feels a little bit too hard for your per current playing level, I'd encourage you to check out his version and his lesson below. So let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and split it up into two parts. So in this video, we're gonna learn the first half of the song, but if you wanna learn the second half, you can click this link or go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for the entertainer. Now on that page will be the tabs that you can print off as a PDF format, as well as access the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed. It's just a really great asset for learning this tune that much easier. All right, so before we jump into learning this, the first thing I wanna talk about is how we're going to approach the rhythms. So we already talked about it being syncopated. So we're gonna use two methods for learning this tune. The first one is going to be playing by ear, which is really simple. If you can sing it, you can play it. The second one is to be, is going to be to count the rhythms. So this really requires an understanding of rhythmic notation. So if you're new to counting rhythms, I'll put an introductory lesson in the description box below. But honestly, there's no better way to really get a grasp on how rhythm and timing connect than by learning to read standard notation. Now the uh, last point I want to bring up is the right hand. So throughout this song, you can use a three finger approach for finger picking, whereas the thumb gets string four and three, index would get string two, and middle would get string one. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're gonna start off with the intro. Intro is only four bars in length, and here's what the first one sounds like. One thing I want you to keep in mind is this, the rhythm for measure one, two, and three are identical. So here's the first measure. So very simple. Ba -da 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 -da. So that's our first approach. If we can sing it, we can play it. But if we look at the rhythm hits, we have one and two and and four. So you can see that that end of two lasts longer, lasts for a quarter note, as well as beat four. So keep that in mind as we go through it. So this first part is playing out of the fifth position. So that basically means this. Each finger gets its own fret. So as you saw, as I cycled through all four strings, index finger got the, everything on the fifth fret, middle got everything on the sixth, ring got everything on the seventh, pinky got everything on the eighth fret. So that leads this to being a very efficient way to finger pick. So keep that in mind as you go through these first few notes, and then we're gonna break that for the very last note, and I'll tell you why. So we start with the index on the fifth fret of string one, then play seven on string one with the ring. Pinky plays eight on string two, and then index comes up and plays five on string two. That gives us our first four notes, all eighths. One and two and... Okay, let's try together. Three, four. 
Awesome. And for this right hand, I'm just going to be doing a little bit of piccato, which is a fancy terminology for alternate finger picking between second and first finger. So if you're new to that, you can try just on the first string, the A string. And if you want to dive deeper into this technique, then check out our lesson on La Jetenita, which is a flamenco tune, and I'll put a link in the description box below. And that one also teaches a really cool accented strum called a rascado, which we actually can throw into this tune later on. So back to this, that last note that we played, the five on string two, that's gonna get held longer. And then you're going to play seven on string two, and here's where we break out of playing out of position five, or I also like to call it a box. We're gonna use the middle finger to play seven on string three. So if you put that together, it sounds and looks like this. Okay, so you can see that you have on top of each other at the very end. So let's see if we can try that measure together. Here we go, three, four. Nice, so don't forget to hold out that fourth note. Three, four, one and two and three and four. Awesome, now we're breaking out of this uh, position playing because we want to use the middle finger to slide down to the second fret. So it stays on that third string, right? We're just sliding down or moving down. It's not, it's not a slide, so we're moving down to the second fret. And that's gonna start our second measure, which sounds like this. And remember, it's the same rhythm. And here's what it sounds like. So first off the bat, you can hear it ends with some harmonics. But before we get there, let's learn the first few notes. So now we know we move down with the middle to the second fret of string three. So we're gonna play that note. Then play the open E, lift that middle finger up, play the open C. And then we're going to do some artificial harmonics using the plucked method. So if you're new to it, it looks like this. Okay, this is a really cool way to get, uh, or to make harmonics, and it creates a really awesome popping harmonic sound, as you heard. So if you're new to this technique, then you can check out our harmonics course. Just click that link, scroll all the way down uh, towards the bottom of the page, and you'll see the course there. Those lessons that teach the mechanics on how to do the technique are completely free. So I'm gonna move forward with this lesson, assuming you know how to do the artificial harmonic using this plucked method. So we're gonna start with the open A, and remember any harmonic we play is always 12 frets up. So we're going to play the 12th fret of string A, then take the middle finger, put it on the 2nd fret of string A, add 12 to that, and you're going to do the 14th fret. And then finally we're going to do the 3rd fret of string 2, and add 12 to that, we get 15. So you may want to just practice those three harmonics, and you don't have to do it in the time frame of the music, just practice getting them nice and clear. See, so yeah, I missed that time, so I'm going to practice again. And then the last one. Nice. So once you get comfortable with that, then you can start to put it into the time frame. Remember, it's the same rhythm as that first measure. One and two and and four. So we have longer for the first one, short for the second one, long for the last one. Okay, if we put that measure together, sounds like this. Let's try together. Three, four. Okay, and if you miss one like I just did, I missed that first open A, just keep going. Once you get it to performance ready, don't stop and try to backtrack, right? Always pretend that you're playing with a band. If you miss a note, uh, does the band stop for you? No, they keep going. So keep that in mind as you practice. So let's try one more time, see if we can nail that harmonic in. Three, four. Nice. If we backtrack, one to two. Here we go. Three, four.
awesome. Now, measure three, the first part is gonna start the same. So the first three notes are the same. Five, seven, eight. Instead of playing the A note on the second string, we're gonna play the open A. And the reason why is because we're going to be switching positions. So we were playing out of the fifth position, or the fifth box. Now we're going to be playing out of the second. So if I put this measure together, you can see how we shift down. Right, so perfectly leads us into the second position. Each finger gets its own fret, two, three, four, five, and we're rocking and rolling. So we're gonna play the open A, we're gonna move down to that second fret of string one, and then we're literally gonna do a chromatic walk down, half steps, going five, four, three on string two. And that three is the first note of the fourth measure, which is the last measure for the intro. So together you have, okay, and we'll play into that first note for that next measure because it really feels like it needs to be there to complete the phrase. So here we go, three, four. Awesome, so this one is going to be beat one for bar four. And we're gonna hold it in for a beat and a half. So you have one and two. Then on the end of two, you're gonna move your hand up and you're gonna grab the 10th fret of string one, and probably with the ring finger. Now here's a cool little effect you can add to it, a little slide that fades out. So when we do something like this, we wanna keep pressure down and slide to about eight or seven, and then lift pressure up and you can hear, right? And then it kind of fades out. It's kind of a cool thing. If you put it into context, three into four makes a lot of sense. Right, it just gives it a nice little, uh, you know, coloring to the note. So that's on beat three. And there's two more notes in this fourth measure, but I want you to think of them as the pickup going into theme number one. So. Da, da, ba, 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 ba. Right, so we'll add those in just a second when we jump into theme one. But let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can play three to four and then one to four. So here we go, three to four. Ready, go. Awesome, and one to four, three, four. Cool. So that's basically the intro in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and jump into theme number one, and this is going to be the fifth measure. But remember, there's that pickup notes that we need to add. Ba -da -da. So that third note, that's going to be the first beat of theme number one or measure five. So let's learn the little walk up. It's a chromatic walk up, this time going up instead of down. So you're going to start with the index on the second fret of string three, then play the third, and then use the ring finger to play the fourth fret. So we have, ba -da. remember that's measure four, four and, and then we're going to kick in to theme one with a C chord. So let's learn how to form the C chord because it's a little bit awkward. So we left off with the ring on the fourth fret of string three, Add the middle finger to three on string one. The other strings will be open, although we're not going to be hitting them. So here's where we talked about in the intro, we have that accent of the weak beat, and this is really evident in this measure. Ba ba, da da, da da. You can even hear right, right off the bat, ba ba. So, right, so anytime you have one of those, and you know this song, like we've heard it a thousand times at this point in our lives, Anytime you have like a really strong melody, just accent it a little bit, meaning you pluck it a little bit harder. Right, so you can pluck the end of one and the end of four just a little bit more and accent those notes. So let's make the C chord. We're gonna play string three, 
then we're going to play string one, and then we're going to play string three again. Then it becomes a C7. So all you have to do is to, to make it a C7 is take the index, put it on the third fret of string four. And again, this time around, we're going to be selective in what we're playing. We're just going to pluck four, two, and one. Okay. But the other idea too is to have sustain going into that. So remember, you have three, one, three. That last note is ringing into the C7. So kind of technically all four strings are ringing at this point in the music. So again, we have one end. Now this end is gonna get held for a quarter. One and two, end. So you're gonna hit string three on the end of two, and then you're going to pluck the C7 four, two, and one on beat three. One and two and three. Okay, let's see if we can try that. Ready, go. One and two and three. Awesome. Now at this point, you're going to pluck the third string one more time, and then we have to do a bit of an awkward stretch going into an F chord. So here's what's going to happen. Index finger is going to lift up and the middle finger is going to lift up at the same time that the ring finger slides up to the fifth fret of string three. Pinky goes underneath that fifth fret of string two, and then index will go onto the third fret of string one. So our F chord is five, five, three, ignoring string number four. But here's the thing. When we move into this, we're just going to pluck one and two, but we want to have this full shape intact because the first hit of the next measure is string three. So you want to keep that whole chord shape intact. So again, backtracking to the C7. You want to practice this chord transition. It's very tricky. Again, index lifts up, middle lifts up as the ring slides up, pinky goes down, index goes down. Okay, so you can practice in any kind of time frame, maybe uh, half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's just a good way to get the muscle memory from going from one chord to the next chord. So let's backtrack. Let's try the entire fifth measure. We have one and two and three, four and. Okay, let's give it a shot. Slow. Three, four. One and two and three, four and. Nice. Now, this next measure, measure number six, sounds like this. Okay, breaking down rhythmically, we have one, two, three, and four and. So let's figure out what's happening right here. So we stay on the F chord that we left off with from the fifth measure. We're going to play string three, and then we're going to pluck one and two, and then we're going to go back to that fourth fret. So you're gonna lift the ring finger up, you use your middle finger to play the fourth fret of string three, and then at this point, you're going to lift everything else up, and we're going to start doing a walk up on the A string, three, five, six. So I'm gonna use the index because it, well, it was already there. And then middle finger for five, ring for six, and eventually we're going to use pinky for seven. So that's coming up at the start of the seventh measure, but hold that thought for right now. So backtracking, we have one, two, three, and four, and let's give that one a shot. Ready, go. One, two, Now going back to the first into the second, so five to six, here we go. Three, four, one and two and three, four and one, two, three and four and. Nice, let's try a little bit faster. Let's go bum bum, ba da da da, something like that. Two, three, four. Here's our next measure, sounds like this. And I played into the first hit of measure eight. So this one, we already knew that we were walking up, right? So we're gonna end that walk up on seven, string one. The 
the rest of the notes will be open. You can strum down. Then we're going to go three, five, and here we have a bit of a tricky chord, a G13. So to form this, first take the index, lay it flat on the fifth fret, strings one, two, and three. G string is open. Ring goes on seven string two, pinky underneath, seven string one. So we're gonna strum down all four for this. So if you look at the first part, we have one and two and, okay? This end of two is gonna last into beat three. Then we're going to play seven on string two, lift the pinky up, five on string one. Remember, it's barred, right? So rhythmically wise, it's the same as that intro, one and two and and four. So pretty simple. Okay, so let's see if we can try that slow. Three, four. Nice. Now this next part, we're going to resolve to a C, and it's the stock basic C major. So the last eighth measure sounds like this. Okay, so let's break down what's happening. So our first few notes are going to be quarter notes. So simple strum, then the open E, open C, then we have four end. Remember that four end from the end of the intro. It is literally just that same start for that pickup going into and so forth. So let's try this measure, it's not hard at all. Here we go, three, four, one, two, three, four, and... Awesome, if we backtrack, seven to eight. Ready, go. And sometimes you can hear that instead of a strum, maybe you pluck the chord. That gives it kind of a, a different tonal color. So you have different options on which ones you choose. All right, so now let's go ahead and backtrack. Let's try five to eight. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. Nice. Now, I've been teaching you guys this in four bar sections, right? So the intro is four bars. This first part of theme one is four bars. We'll look at the next section, which is going to be another four bars. So that'll be nine, 10, 11, 12. And then there'll be one last section, which is the final four bars for theme one. And of course that's 13, 14, 15, 16. So kicking off on nine, it's going to sound very, very familiar. It's the same as measure five. Going into the next one, measure 10. It's going to be familiar too, but a different ending. Sounds like this. Okay, so remember, we start on the F chord. We're going to play three, then pluck one and two. That's the same beat one, beat two. Then we're going again back to the fourth fret of string three. But this time it's going to last for a quarter note. So you have one, two, three. At this point, you're gonna lift everything up, play the open A, and then the third fret of string two with the ring. So one, two, three, four, and... Let's give that a shot. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, and... Nice. Going into the next measure, it's a D7. It's that Hawaiian D7. So I'll put up the chord graph. We all know this. Two, zero, two, zero. I would use first and second finger for this one. But again, probably a chord shape we've played a lot. So here's what this measure sounds like. And actually, I lied. I played into the next one. But again, these sound like phrases, these two measures at a time. There you go, there's the 11th just by itself. So make the Hawaiian D7. You can strum or pluck, but you wanna go four to two. After that, play the open A, 
than the third fret of string one with the ring finger. And here's a little tricky part because you're gonna be sliding all the way up to seven. So we're going four to two, open A, three. At this point, lift these two fingers up and slide up to seven. So eighth note rhythm, one and two and... So you also, eighth note rhythm, as in don't rush the slide, so don't go. <laughs> right, keep that rhythm intact. One and two and... Okay, so your choice, pluck or strum, four to two, open A, third fret of string one, lift those two fingers up, slide up to seven. Let's give it a shot. Three, four, one and two and... Now this is gonna get tied into B3, then we're going to revert back to that five to eight box that we played out of. Use the index to play five on string one, pinky to play eight on string two, and then the open A. So if you put that together, you have. Okay, let's give it a shot. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and nice. Next one, G7. So remember how we did the G13? The only difference here is that we don't need that pinky down. This gives us a standard stock G7. So this one you can strum or pluck. And it's gonna last a beat and a half. So one and two. Now on the end of two, you're gonna play string three, and then you're going to pluck one and two as a staccato pop. So anytime you do a staccato hit, you want to lift pressure up. Right, that's gonna cut the note same way that you barely touch the strings to do a muted strum. So this one sounds like, and you hear the pickup at the end. So you have one and three, four and. So go ahead and make the G7 strum. One and two and three, four and. So let's try three. Four, one, and two, and three, four, and... Nice. Now if we backtrack, let's try 11 into 12. So it's gonna sound like this. Three, four. Cool, and if we try the entirety of the second part, so nine, 10, 11, 12, sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Cool. Going into the last section, these last four measures for theme one. Now, here's what's really, really cool about it. 13 and 14 are identical to five and six. So you already know that, and one more surprise. The next measure, 15, is identical to seven. So you know those three already. That leaves us with one last measure to learn. Sounds like this. Okay, so let's tackle that one. And I actually lied, there's another section. Apparently I really need to look at the uh, sheet music with my glasses on. <laughs> Silly me. So my bad, but we'll get there in a second. So this measure, very simple. Sounds like that. So we're gonna do C, just strum the regular C. One, two, then on beat three, hit the open C. And then we're gonna go three, five to finish it up. So one, two, three. Four and let's try three, four, one, two, three, four and awesome. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try 13, 14, 15, 16. Remember, 13, 14, 15 is identical to five, six, seven. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. Nice. 
Okay, so here we go. Last section, for reals this time. <laughs> this is going to be the most difficult part, but it's a really, really cool progression. It's a neat walk down, a neat chordal walk down. So let me play it all the way through and then we'll break it down. And I want you to watch what's going to happen on string two. So we're playing out of these, uh, this C based chord, but it's going to turn into other chords, but the walk down is going to be on string two, which you can see right there. So six, five, four, eventually ending on three. So keep an eye out for that walk down on string two. But here is the 17th measure to the end. 17, 18, 19, 20. So let's tackle what's happening. So if we think about where we left off, we left off on 16. One, two, three, four, and it starts our walk up. So you can think of da da as the pickup. So go ahead and put pinky on seven, strum all with the open strings above it. Then play three, five again. And then here we're going into C7. So I want you to use third and fourth finger for this. So third is six on string two, pinky stays on seven, string one. So if we think about the pickup from the last measure, three, five, strum, three, five, strum, but it's C7. To finish it up, you're going to hold this out for a quarter note, and then you're going to play three, five, three. So that means you've got to lift the pinky up but keep that finger down so it sustains and rings out. So again, from that pickup, ba da strum, three, five, C7, three, five, three. Okay, so let's try that from the pickup, starting on B4, two, three, four, and strum, three, five, C7, three, five, three. So as we go into our next measure, we're going to have another chord to start us off with. Here's the thing though. We left off with third finger down and the index finger down. So going into our next chord, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put the middle finger down onto the fifth fret of string two. So lift that ring finger up, then take the pinky, put it down on seven on string one. So we have open, open, five, seven, but take note that index remains anchored because we're gonna need that note in just a second. So the big rule of thumb here is that we have a lot of fingers that are going to remain anchored either for one of two reasons. The first reason is because we want the note to ring out like this second string note. And the other reason is because we have to go immediately to it after playing the chord. So this index finger is the next note. So after you strum this F major nine, you're going to lift the pinky up, play three, it's already there, anchored, then play five with the ring finger. So if we backtrack to put it into context, we have three, five, strum, three, five, C7, three, five, three, strum the F major, three, five. That's where we're at. So let's build this piece by piece. Let's start from that pickup at the end of 16. Two, three, four, and strum, three, five, strum, three, five, three, strum, three, five. Now at this point, we have another chord, right? So here's what's gonna happen. Middle finger's gonna go down to the fourth fret of string two, pinky goes onto seven, string one. Okay? These other fingers can remain where they're at. Now, here's what happens to finish up this measure. We have to lift both of these fingers up to play three, five, three, one more time. So once you strum this F minor 13, you're going to lift both of those up and finish up with three, five, three. So putting it again into context, if I backtrack, I have All right, 
So let's see if we can try just to, to break it down, the hard new parts. Let's try just 18, which sounds like this. Okay, so it starts with the F major 9. Remember, index stays anchored for this. So we have open, open, 5, 7, strum, 3, 5, drop the middle down, put the pinky down, strum, 3, 5, 3, okay? That is just measure 18. Let's give it a go. 3, 4, strum, 3, 5, strum, 3, 5, 3, okay? Backtracking from the end of 16. 1, 2, 3. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, almost there guys. Now what we're going to do is flip-flop. So flip-flop meaning index comes up to three on string two, pinky goes down seven on string one. So we have a variation on C. So we're going to strum all four. And for this one, you kind of want to keep this as if it was a partial bar. It's not going to be in total partial bar form. It's going to be kind of crooked a little bit. But we want to keep the first string held down, the third fret of the first string held down. Because we have to play 3-5 right after this C chord. Okay, so when I strum, I'm going to lift pinky up, play 3 on string 1. 5 on string 1, and then I'm going to go up to that G13 that we played before, hold it out into beat 3, then play 7 on string 2, lift pinky, and play 5 on string 1. So that measure is very familiar, it's the same as measure 7 with the first chord altered. So. Very, very hard stuff. Let's try just that last measure. So again, we have an altered of C. 3, 5, G, 7, 7, 5. Okay, let's try just that. 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4. Okay, and it's going to finally resolve on C. That's going to be the last hit for the last measure. But let's backtrack. Let's try from 16, the end of 16, all the way to that last C hit. So here we go. One, two, three. Four and one and two and three. And four and one and two and three. And four and one and two and three. And four, one. Awesome. So that is the one that you want to practice the most. Those last hits is a finger frenzy. So spend the most time on that last section. But that will complete everything for this first part one lesson. So that gives us the entire intro and theme one. So if I play through it, I'll play through it slowly. Give us a context of everything that we've learned thus far. So from the theme number one as where I'll start. And actually the pickup from the intro. So here we go. So that's the basic gist of everything that we covered. It's a lot. So that's all of theme one. And of course, we already learned the intro before that. But that's where we're going to leave it for this lesson. If you guys want to learn the second half, which is really cool. And so forth. That's going to be covered in the part two lesson. So you can watch the part two lesson by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for 
the entertainer. Don't forget too, on that page is the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records, as well as the really cool interactive tab player. So that on-screen tab player where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the part two one. Take care.